provocations are a central aspect of the Reggio Emilia philosophy. The town of Reggio Emilia, where this approach to teaching was first developed, is in Italy. And the word provocation is a rough translation of an Italian term used in the Reggio Emilia schools. The English word can have some negative connotations. Provoking people can make them angry, and provocative things can be disturbing. But the meaning of the Italian word is closer to the idea of thought-provoking. When a Reggio Emilia instructor sets up a provocation, the purpose is to invite the children to actively experience, investigate, explore, reflect on, and wonder about some part of their world. Provocations are things that the children can see, listen to, touch, manipulate, even smell or taste. They provide real-life experiences that can eventually be discussed and extended in activities that relate those experiences to the abstract ideas in formal school subjects, such as mathematics, science, social studies, and literature. But the provocations themselves are open-ended. In other words, as the teacher, you are not looking for the correct curriculum-approved response to the provocation. Instead, taking a Reggio Emilia approach means listening to and taking note of the children's responses to the provocation, their explorations, their curiosities, and their theories about what's going on. The more aware you are of what they actually think and wonder about their experiences, rather than what you or the curriculum intend for them to think and wonder about, the more your mental image of the child will be useful in helping you to plan projects, discussions, and other activities that will actually challenge and extend their understandings. Provocations are not teacher-led activities. Instead, they usually involve a change in the environment that piques the children's interest. Viewing the environment as the child's third teacher, alongside family members and school teachers, is another central aspect of Reggio Emilia philosophy. And provocations provide an excellent example of how the environment as third teacher works in everyday practice. Changes in the everyday environment naturally attract attention. So a change in the classroom environment is likely to create at least momentary curiosity. The changes that cause surprise or wonder or fascination and that invite extended attention including creative play and exploration, do so because they challenge and extend the children's current knowledge, understanding, and capabilities. They are thought-provoking changes. A provocation can be as simple as hanging a prism in a place where it will make rainbows that catch the children's attention, or placing a mirror at the children's height or an mbira within easy reach. Grouping familiar things in a way that suggests or encourages unusual activities is also a good provocation. For example, grouping spotlights and interesting shapes in a darkened corner to encourage shadow play, or offering a tub of water with a variety of objects that sink, float, or dissolve, or adding unusual materials or objects to your art corner such as aluminum foil or seeds. But provocations can also be more long-lasting and complex. For example, bringing in a class pet or plants or other living creatures whose needs and growth and activity will cause the children to watch and wonder. Toys and art materials that encourage children to construct and deconstruct and experiment and be creative can also be provocations but only if they're unfamiliar or are presented in an unfamiliar way that inspires new thoughts and activities and curiosities. 
natural changes to the children's environment, such as puddles, snow, spider webs, or spring flowers on the playground, can also be treated as impromptu provocations for young children. When they inspire wonder, excitement, curiosity, and investigation. Trips off the school grounds, including neighborhood walks and field trips, can also provoke the children to explore and ask questions about the less familiar environment. For example, some children's museums have rooms and exhibits that invite the children to experiment and explore or create freely. And some public gardens encourage visitors to touch and smell as well as look at the plants. Even a short walk that allows the children to examine changes in the school neighborhood, such as road repairs or a fallen tree, can provoke genuine interest and questions. But keep in mind that field trips that are guided or curated in ways that push the children towards interests and questions and answers that have been determined by someone else are not provocations. Now, this doesn't mean that provocations shouldn't be inspired by class projects and activities and other aspects of your curriculum. For example, it's a good idea to set up provocations that might help the children test their own arguments and hypotheses, or solve problems that are frustrating their creative impulses, or expand their understandings of class projects. It's the open-endedness that makes an activity a provocation, the commitment to letting the children's own curiosities and problems and questions and theories inspire the activity and also steer the direction of the activity and the discussion and the follow-up. For example, a science activity set up to provoke curiosity about sinking and floating may instead inspire interest in other properties of water. A trip to a local monument intended to provoke social studies questions about local people, history, and culture might instead inspire science questions about statues. The Reggio Emilia approach to provocations involves acting as a researcher in your own classroom, trying to improve your understanding of the children's understandings and thoughts and needs and motivations, listening thoughtfully to the questions they're actually asking, rather than trying to steer them towards approved activities and expected questions. Some teachers are uncomfortable with this approach at first, in part because they may not know the answers to some of the unexpected questions. But not knowing is actually not a problem. Reggio Emilia methods do not require teachers to answer the questions as they are asked. It's actually considered more educative to encourage the children to hypothesize, discuss, come up with theories, and continue exploring, even over the course of many weeks. Reminding them of their curiosities and theories by reintroducing them later during class discussions, as a part of ongoing class projects, or as a part of a new provocation, helps the children to continue to develop experience-based understandings of real-world phenomena which can later be connected to abstract, formal understandings, for example, by reading books on the subject or discussing it with an expert. Taking note of the children's questions and interests so that you can follow up on them also takes some practice. But as you become more experienced, the concept of provocations will help you offer an environment that consistently acts as the children's third teacher supporting your teaching by enriching their classroom learning experiences. Mm -hmm.